Hello, I am Dr. Rajesh Sharma, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, James Engineering Management Technical Campus, Greater Noida. The subject that I teach in this semester for BTEX seven semester students is optoelectronics and optical communication. And the topic that I discuss today in this video lecture is optical network, T1 carrier multiplexing, time division multiplexing, and wavelength division multiplexing. First of all, we focus on on a basic optical network. And of course, when we establish an optical network, we used optical fiber link to connect, and this is a physical link, to connect different optical nodes. So a network uses the optical fiber as a transmission medium and provides connection between many users for communication purpose is nothing but the optical network, right? So in this pic, you see you have different optical nodes. These optical nodes may be mobile phones, maybe some computers or any other devices, right? And these, these are the wavelengths that are used by the, by the optical fibers that connect different nodes, one mode to another. So this is a uh, physical links. These are the physical links of optical fiber, right? And each node operate on different wavelengths, say L11, L, lambda one, lambda two, and so on. So in basic optical network, what this basic optical network comprises of? First of all, nodes are one of the basic elements of any optical network. So an optical nodes is a multi-function unit capable of receiving as well as transmitting and processing the optical signal, right? And these optical networks provides the point to point physical connections between the nodes of the network that we already seen in the previous slides. Different nodes are connected to each other by some by optical fiber. And a signal carried out on a dedicated wavelength to a destination node is known as light path. And if you see this particular picture, this is basically, uh, you can say there's a data, optical uh, data communication network. And it start with uh, channels, you have different channels of different wavelengths. Multiplex all these channels, right? And then you have electrical to optical device that we called as a source. And this is a physical link, which is the optical fiber. At the receiving side, we have port obligi. It is the reverse of E obligo, means optical to electrical conversion. So these are the detectors. And this is the inverse of multiplex, means all the wavelength, all the frequency are separate by this the multiplexer and you have different channels like these channels, right? So what are the elements of optical network? We have passive power couplers or splitters and the number of input output ports and the power is split in different ratios. This is the function of a splitter to split the power in different ports and we have star couplers we split the incoming power into number of outputs in a star network we have all optical switches divert the incoming light into a particular output so we have optical switch now come to the another uh, topic this is the multiplexing what is the concept of this multiplexing so multiplexing actually 
is referred to a combination of information streams from multiple sources for transmission over a shared or a common medium. So once you have a different source of information coming from different points and uh, having different frequencies or wavelength, what you want, you want that all the all the sources that have the information that is coming from you have what you want, you want that all the all the all the information from different sources are to be shared or to be transmitted through a single fiber. So for this type of thing, you need a multiplexing where you have to share a single or you may say a common medium to share uh, to share a messages of different sources. So, so multiplexing, uh, so multiplexer is a mechanism that implements the, this particular concept, right? So multiply, uh, sorry, multiplexing process is to be done by multiplexer. Similarly, demultiplexing refers to the separation of a combination back into the separate information streams. And the, the function of this, the process of this demultiplexing is to be done by a demultiplexer. So multiplexer and demultiplexer are the devices that do multiplexing and demultiplexing respectively. Then there are different types of multiplexing in which we focus on time division multiplexing. So this is usually used uh, with digital signals or analog signals. So you can do time division multiplexing with analog as well as digital signals. And uh, in this data from various sources are carried in respective frames. So we make a frame. You know, frame. So each frame consists of a set of time slots and uh, each source is assigned one or more time slots per frame. So in time to the multiplexing, uh, all the sources uh, share uh, the same bandwidth, right? But time slot is given to uh, different sources. So if you have a sender one, sender two to sender n, sender one have information, sender two have information, what do you have to do? You have to uh, just make a frame of each sender one, sender two, Frame one, frame two, frame, right? Frame and in frame you have a you know a time slots, right? So one by one, uh, each uh, frame of each, each sort is to be sent on this this common uh, optical fiber uh, that yeah, and at each frame utilize whole bandwidth of this optical fiber. So this is the you know very advantage of using time division multiplexing is that all the frames of different sources share uh, the same wavelength. So you need not to divide the wave, the, the bandwidth uh, to each user. And this is a demultiplexer and these frames are separated with respect to, to the receiver 1, 2, 3 and 9. So time division multiplexing, it is a digital multiplexing techniques and channels is not divided on the basis of frequency but on the basis of time right each frame has each frame has its time and this cycle is continuous so total time available in the channel is divided between several users each user is allowed a particular time interval called time slot or slice so in TDM, the data rate capacity of the transmission medium should be greater than the data rate required by sending the receiving device so a time division multiplexing, TDM is a digital multiplexing techniques for combining several channels into uh, high rate. So the TDM, instead of sharing a portion of the bandwidth, as in FDM, uh, this is the beauty of TDM that we have to utilize the same bandwidth for different channels. Uh, we need to divide the bandwidth for different sources. So each connection occupies a portion of time in the link or in this particular figure. So in this particular figure, the portion of signal 1, 2, 3, and 4 occupies the link sequentially. We can divide TDM into two different schemes, synchronous and statistical. So if you look at this figure, uh, we have uh, these uh, different sources, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this is uh, this is a multiplexer. And this, these are, you know, these are the frames that belong to 
this yellow friends belong to say uh, source one this particular color belong to two and this color belong to three and so on so data is to be flow so each source uh, your data belong to each source flow through across this same uh, share the same medium of you know the same wavelength and this is the multiplexer that separate these data according to the uh, user one two and three and four so time to the multiplexing uh, we have you know so we have uh, frames actually consist of the slots these are the slots and these are the users and system two users so time is divided into frames of fixed length and each frame has a fixed number of constant size slots and each circuit obtain one or more slots per frame so this is the and then we have a three candidate system in this uh, time division multiplexing in which the digital uh, telephone system use the uh, tdm pulse code modulation uh, voice channels is basic unit for tdm actually in this pcm system that is used for voice communication one channel is equal to 8 bits per sample and we have to take 8000 sample per second so we have 64 uh, kbps 2 bytes per second so t1 carrier uh, carrier carries digital signal 1 ds1 that uh, combines 24 voice channels into a digital stream so this is 1 2 24 these all are multiplexed and this share the same medium and this uh, actually this is a dimal dimax so bit rate how you calculate bit rate you have 8000 frame per second multiply by this this is actually a formula you put all the things in the formula you get this 1.44 mbps bit rate in this t carrier system which we call as t1 carrier system right and that system actually Uh, used in pulse code modulation voice channels so uh, once again i summarize uh, optical time division multiplexing so multiport fiber have is the several bandwidth restrictions because of modal dispersion and single mode fiber cannot carry the traffic generated by needs of uh, modern society so consider an example the theoretical bandwidth of single mode optical fiber is 50 terahertz while modern transmitter and receiver can operate at the 10 gigahertz therefore bit rate of uh, such point to point communication was restricted by the system electronic equipment so solution to this problem is to use fiber optic technology multiplexing there are two types time division multiplexing and wave division wavelength division multiplexing and wavelength division multiplexing is more common as compared to tdm so for optical system two types of multiplexing are utilized one is Time division multiplexing, other is wavelength division multiplexing. So again, we have the same figure. This is the optical TDM. These are these are the you know four different sources. These are the data. One source is TX one trans two trans source is TX two three source TX three four two. And this is a multiplexer that combine all these information, all these four sources, and these are the, you know. Frames, in frame there is a slots, and then formation is done like that. This is Dmax. This is the opposite of uh, multiplexer. Separate the data according to RX1, RX2, RX3, RX4. So signal from transmitters enter at multiplexer. It takes sample of each signal, assign a specific time slot to this sample. At receiver side, the demultiplexer separate these samples and direct the signal from TX1 to RX1 and so on. Thus, a receiver obtained a signal from transmitter at a sequence of time slotted samples, and we store those to produce the original message. Now, uh, this is again an optical TDM. We have an input signal from three sources. All of these are multiplexed and share the same uh, channel. Now look at this. This particular figure belongs to source number one. This belongs to source two. This belongs to source three. And again, we repeat the frames, right? In this way, simultaneously, information of all the three sources are, are to be flowing across the optical fiber. So, in this optical TDM, by using optical TDM, you have to increase the series bit rate, high speed, high bandwidth electronic equipment needed, expensive to build and maintain. So, these are some uh, 
basic, uh, you know, uh, there are some basic uh, concepts that involve in optical communication. So, definition uh, in fiber optic communication, wavelength comes to the wavelength division multiplexing. In fiber optic communication, wavelength division multiplexing is a technology that which multiplex a number of optical carriers signal into a single optical fiber by using different wavelength of colors of light. Look at this. So, we have a different, this is a source one, link one, link two, link three, link four. And link one, link one, you know, has, uh, have had the output of, uh, of of light having lambda one frequency, uh, sorry, wavelength or f one frequency, tp two have f two, tp three have f three frequency, tp four. So we have different four different frequencies of wavelength. All these four different wavelengths of frequency are multiplex, and you know, use the single fiber. And this multiplex receive all the frequencies simultaneously and separate these by respectively reason. Lambda 1 goes to link 1, lambda 2 goes to 2, lambda 3 goes to 3 and lambda 4 goes to 4. Again, this is a picture that shows wavelength division multiplexing. So, FTM with multiple beam of light at different frequencies and uh, carries over optical fiber links. So, commercial system with 160 channels of 10 GPPS, lab demo of optical channels. And so, architecture similar to other FDM system, multiplexer consolidates laser sources, 1550 nanometer for transmission over single fiber, optical amplifiers, amplify all the wavelengths, demultiplex separate channels and the destination. So, also we call it as a dense wavelength division multiplexing. In short, we can say that DWD. So, what is wavelength division multiplexing? So, light has the property that keeps it from mixing and allows it to separate into its color like this by a prism. So, we look at the prism, all the lights coming there and they are separated. So, WDM, which we call as the wavelength division multiplexing, uses this property to send signals of different colors down fiber simultaneously. So, in wave division multiplexing, you have different sources. Data is coming from different sources. Source 1, lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda or all multiplex with the optical multiplexer and share the same single optical fiber. So all the data of different sources have to be transmitted simultaneously. And you know, all lambda 1, lambda 2 share the same uh, wavelength. That is the wavelength that is supported by optical fiber. Again, this is the picture that shows WDM transmitter, you have lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 4, all are multiplex. In this optical multiplexer share the same wavelength, uh, sorry, bandwidth, and these are two multiplexers that separate this uh, signal according to the receiver 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, again, this is a figure that shows the same concept that I discussed in previous slides. You have different signals having different wavelengths, all are multiplexed together. This is a single fiber, and that single fiber support all. This lambda one, lambda two, lambda four, and this WD multiplex separate all the, all the signals of different wavelengths like that. Lambda one, lambda two, lambda four. So this is the wavelength division multiplexing technology. Again, I have the same thing. You have different three sources here. Actually, the wavelength division multiplexing is really a technology uh, which multiplexes multiple optical signals on one fiber by utilizing different wavelengths or colors of laser light to carry the various signals. So, through the use of bidirectional communication of a single fiber, network managers can realize <coughs> sorry, a multiplication effect within their available fiber capacity. So, there is a simple example concerning WDM technology. If each color of light carries a data rate of 10 Gbps, then combining the color of light into the same fiber increases the total data rate to 14 gigabytes per second. So, in addition, there are two critical factors inside a wavelength division multiplexing system, which is the optical wavelength multiplexer, MUX, and also T multiplexer. Thank you very much.